Good morning, students. I hope you've had a great morning. It's just beautiful outside. It seems to be getting warmer and warmer. Um, and here we are on the eve, that the eve is like the, the night before, the night before spring break starts. I hope you're excited about some of the maybe fun spring break activities you'll be doing with your families. Most of us, I think, will be staying at home, but I bet your families have some ideas for some extra fun stuff to do during the coming week. Let's take a look at our morning message. April 3rd, 2020. Dear students, we have been learning about George Washington. What facts can you remember? Retell them to someone nearby. Okay, and notice I'm practicing more scooping while I'm reading instead of pointing to each word. You want to work on scooping. Most of you should be scooping your words at this point. Let's just reread that to make sure we know what the question is. We have been learning about George Washington. Okay, what facts can you remember? Oh, there I've got another R-E, an R-E word. Boom. Retell them. Boom. To someone nearby. Mrs. Kilmer. So I'm going to give you a minute to... Um, retell some of those facts. You know, in school we count facts. We kind of go, hmm, I remember this. I remember this. You could count them on your fingers and then retell them to someone nearby. I'll give you a moment to do that and then we'll start off with part two of our George Washington biography. Welcome back, students. We're going to get back to George Washington, first president of the United States. But remember, when we jump back into a chapter book, we want to usually just look back a little to, remi to re remind ourselves what we've already been learning or reading about. So we, we read the first chapter, Just a Boy, about his childhood. We read chapter two, A Soldier and a Farmer. We read chapter three, The Fight for Freedom, right? That's when we started on the Revolutionary War. And then we got to the end of that, and chapter four is when... He's going to become President Washington. Here we go. Chapter 4, President Washington. For the next few years, George worked at Mount Vernon. Many people visited him. Artists painted his picture. George and Martha had no children together. Patsy and Jackie had died, but the Washingtons adopted Jackie's children, George and Nellie. So here's a picture of the family at home. George loved being home, but the country needed a new government. So in 1787, whoops, 1787, he met with other leaders. They wrote the rules for the new government. We call these rules the Constitution. And here is a painting that shows uh, George Washington at the Constitutional Convention. That's where they were writing it. And again, it's interesting to remember, a painting like this, isn't really exactly what it looked like. There were probably some people sitting there maybe sketching and drawing some things that were going on at the time and then later the artist did a painting. So <clears throat> it's not the same as a picture that shows exactly what happened as a photograph, but it's giving you the idea of what was happening. Then in 1789, George was elected first president of the United States. He thought he was not good enough to be president, but he took the job and this says, the caption for this photo says, George Washington's first inauguration as president was held in New York City on April 30th, 1789. So remember, the capital of our country was at first in New York City because Washington, D.C. had not been built yet. <clears throat> the new country had many money problems. George helped solve them, and he watched his country grow. At first, the government met in New York City. Then it moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and here is a picture, a caption that says, Vice President John Adams with Washington's first cabinet. Thomas Jefferson, Henry Knox, Edmund Randolph, and Alexander Hamilton. So the cabinet, you know, a cabinet can mean many things. A cabinet is like a cupboard where you keep some stuff. But the cabinet for the president is the group of people who work with him very closely and advise him, who give him his, his advice. And here's where the new government met at the building in New York City. But there were plans to build a new capital on the Potomac River. Someday it would be called Washington, D.C. And this is what they built right near us. President Washington laid the cornerstone for the new capital building. Here is the competition. Oh, I'm making a connection 
So they also held a competition for the design of the Capitol building. The Capitol building is where Congress meets. Those are the, our representatives who make laws for us. And I'm making a connection to the book we read um, yesterday, was it, or maybe the day before, or the day before, about the house that George built, about how they had a competition for the design of the White House also. In 1792, George was elected president again. Great Britain and France were still enemies. Some people thought America should help France. George said no. His country was too young. It was growing fast, but it needed peace. In 1797, George's term as president ended. People gave speeches and held parties to show how much they loved him. That made George feel good, but he was tired and ready to go home. And here is somebody from France coming to ask George Washington for help with their war against England, but George said no. And this is chapter five, Home at Last. Back at Mount Vernon, George worked on his house and farm again. He was always trying to make them better. So these are just, I think, drawings from people's imagination about George on his farm, feeding a horse. They're with workers, they're walking with Martha. But France was causing trouble for American ships. There might be a war and the new president, John Adams, wanted George to lead the U.S. Army. So George went back to Philadelphia. He spent months getting the army ready, but war never came. Phew! <laughs> and George was glad. Now he could go home for good. So there's a picture of John Adams. He was the second president. And I'm making a connection to the end of the house that George built, that book where they had John Adams moving into the White House. And, um, <clears throat> and here is a picture of George Washington, or a drawing of someone's idea of him in his garden at Mount Vernon. One cold, wet day, George rode around his farm for five hours. He caught a cold. Soon he was very sick. Doctors came, but they couldn't help him. On December 14, 1799, George Washington died. When his soldier friend, Henry Lee, heard that George was dead, he said George was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. Henry Lee was right. So here's a, a painting that was made at George Washington's deathbed. And there's his friend Henry Lee. And the famous thing that was said about George Washington, that he was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. Okay, here on this almost last page are important dates. So instead of having a, a timeline that's like a chart, I don't have my charts up here, but we've seen some other timelines where there's like a line and the dates. But in this case, they just made a list of the important dates. And here's the index, where if you wanted to find an important uh, word or topic, you could look up the page number where it's located. Okay. So that's it for our biography about George Washington. When we get back after spring break, uh, we'll enjoy a couple more fun stories about George Washington before we move on to our learning about Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and I hope you have a nice morning and I'll see you in the afternoon for our fun story. See you later. <laughs>